I'm Bob Brill. He's Eric Kramer. Welcome to Kramer and Brill, an NFL fantasy football podcast. Each week, my co-host, former Bears and Lions quarterback, Eric Kramer, and myself, delve into your fantasy football choices and hopefully help you on your way to victory. Now, most of the fantasy leagues are over right now, but there's a lot of other stuff going on. You got uh, uh, Wynn Terry's money on Fox, Fox Uvet, and a whole lot of other stuff, uh, ESPN, U, uh, Yahoo. They're still doing stuff, so hopefully we can help you along the way. And you can find out more by going to our website, KramerandBrill.com, or on my Bob Brill YouTube channel. Well, we're one game away from the Super Bowl, and then there were four. At least one of the teams we figured would be there is out. Well, the Buffalo Bills rematch of the Bengals proved one thing. Only one of those two teams we thought would be there at the end might be there. The Bills were crushed for the Bengals, 27-10. They were faltering down the stretch. The Bengals were rising. Like There's only three AFC teams left that we even considered. You know, I know you were heavy on Kansas City. Uh, I was heavy on Buffalo. We all figured, yeah, Cincinnati might return as tough as that is. Well, you know, you, you nailed it in that uh, you were down to the final four. I was in that once and uh, it didn't turn out so well back when we played the Redskins <laughs> when I was in Detroit. But I, it's obviously special getting there. And what I think we saw in this Buffalo-Cincinnati game was really what plagued Buffalo all along. And if if they're running the ball, it's been Josh Allen running the ball. If they're if if the downfield threat's been happening, it's either Stephon Diggs or nobody. And if it's not been Von Miller creating the pass rush, there hasn't been any. And so those are all the things that showed up. And they happen to be, in my opinion, play a better team with a better quarterback. Yeah. Cincinnati has just been really looking really good. You know, the Cowboys are in disarray after a not so great performance by Dak Prescott. And, and the fact that Tony Pollard broke his leg, moving forward, that could be a real problem. They're talking three months he's going to be out, but what kind of recovery is he going to have? And he was just breaking into his own there, and they were going to have to figure out what to do with Zeke Elliott. And what this means going forward for Zeke Elliott is a mystery. C.D. Lamb was incredible, but the game just wasn't as close as the score was. Again, I mean, I don't know if you saw, but when it happened, when they showed it in slow motion, Tony Pollard's – Injury. I had to look away. I mean, I was a. That did not look good. And what it exposed, in my opinion, was that Dak Prescott really isn't what people have made him out to be. And he's been what he's been all in this game. He's been what he's been all year, which is poor decision maker. Can't really read defenses all that well, at least not when it counts. And throws the ball up for grabs. And so their defense is incredible. Dallas's defense is as good as anybody. Um, but without Tony <laughs> Pollard, it kind of exposed Ezekiel Elliott's better days are probably in the in the past. And then you mentioned CD Lamb, but you didn't mention anyone else. And so to be into that upper tier, you've got to have more than one guy. I mean, Dalton Schultz um didn't do much. And they just don't have kind of the compliment. Oh, and they're Offensive line got exposed, by the way. And so I think that's like, are, are the Cowboys, like, is that the team right now that you want to go into next year with the way they are? I don't think so. You know, it's interesting because this is the very first time my grandson, uh, it's his first football season, and he loves the Dallas Cowboys. He lives in Dallas. I mean, what else supposed to do? I yeah, want to right. send him a you only have one choice. So. Yeah, I, I want to send him a Steeler jersey for Christmas. And my daughter said, "No, he'll get beat up at school." So <laughs> I sent him <laughs> a CD Lamb jersey, and uh, he's bummed. You know, it's his first first season. He's really following him, and now he's bummed. And we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens next year. Hopefully, he'll. Well, stick. One thing I found out with kids is when Dylan, my son, who's now twenty four, when he was. You know, seven or eight, starting to pay attention to football. The Chiefs had their one good season wow. with Priest Holmes at running back, and that's when he fell in love with them. He and this is in California, so he fell in love with a team that for over a decade he was the only guy wearing Charger <laughs> gear in California. Being halfway across the country. <laughs> <laughs> so if they hang in there. Trust me. Oh, uh, oh, we're we're looking forward to it. Grand, his grandfather's going to be real proud that he's actually doing following sports. Uh, I did not see the Eagles crushing the Giants 38-7. to We talked about this last week, and there was no way. I don't think either one of us saw I, I thought there'd be a better showing. And you said they would stop Barkley, and they did with 61 yards. And who the heck is Kenneth Gainwell 
112 yards while Miles Sanders added 90. I remember Kenneth Gainwell a little bit from last year, a little spots here and there, but 112 in a playoff game. Like you, I didn't see this lopsided outcome either. I don't think many people did outside of Philadelphia. And I bought into the Daniel Jones hype too. And it's not like he played that bad, especially early on. It's to me, the Eagles are just that good. And they've got arguably the best offensive line in football. Uh, they filled up the gaps they had on defense in the middle part of the year when they have a tough time stopping the run. And they're kind of elite across the board. And mind you, just Jalen Hurts wasn't even healthy. And so, you know, now that he's got another full week to recover, uh, they're on a roll once again. And they beat a pretty good Giants team, and it wasn't even a fight. So I, I you know, uh, it's hard, to, it's hard to really knock anything the Eagles are at this point because they're playing as good as anybody right now. And we expected the Chiefs over the Jags, but we didn't expect 27-20 in a close game. And now the big question is, is Patrick Mahomes physically fit after he hobbled around there for a while? Correct, because he was a statue in the second half and yet still performed. And that was a big reason why they won the game is that Jacksonville, for some reason, no longer could get pressure on him when he was not moving. And but I think, um, you know, what we saw, I well, what I came away with that game, obviously, the Chiefs are once again, what, for the fifth straight time in the AFC championship game, oh, yeah. second straight time they're hosting it at home. And um, but what I saw from Jacksonville was a team that now they're the team. That's starting to make plays consistently. And it's not, doesn't have to be, you know, 70 yard bombs. I'm talking uh, check downs that get first downs and uh, running, like they gashed Kansas City in the run game. And the combination of Doug Peterson, who his career has been revived, uh, uh, and Trevor Lawrence, who his career by and large has been revived. And then they've got pieces around them that I would love to continue on as a Jacksonville Jaguars if I'm those two players and whoever's in that locker room. This is a solid team, offensively and defensively. Yeah, I think we're going to hear from them more and more in the next couple of years. I think uh, Lawrence uh, set, is the centerpiece that, like they knew he would when they drafted him number one overall. And I, and I think, uh, it, you know, the old thing used to be you take a quarterback five years. It's only taken him, what, three, you know, to get there. Yeah. Joe Burrow, I mean, they're both – uh, they're they're right up there. I mean, they play a different game in college now than back at that point when it was three yards in a cloud of dust, and now it's a pro offense in the game. So that that should move it up a, a, a couple of years, and it has. I think it's it, it's been. And, a, and I think that, that I think pro offenses are starting to go into do, be a little bit more in line with what college offenses are, mm -hmm. and so there's you don't see the long separation of time that it would normally take back in the day to go from a great college quarterback to being a solid NFL quarterback. You don't see that anymore because the offenses themselves and the defenses they're seeing are so much more in line. Well, let's get right to the games. Two big ones and four excellent teams. Let's start with the Niners and the Eagles. The big question is, can Brock Purdy continue his rookie sensation ways? Uh, they have weapons. Philly has a strong defense. I like the Niners' offense better, and even if they uh, the defenses are equal, I'd stick pretty much with any Niner offensive player. However, you have to consider who's hot right now, and if that means Gainwell and Sanders are hot, this could be the up, upset the apple cart. Well, the answer to your question about can Brock Purdy continue his sensational play, he doesn't have to, in, in the traditional sense anyway. I mean, against the Cowboys, uh, was he that sensational? I mean, in in the traditional sense where – you think it's big explosive plays. He didn't do any of that. There were, in fact, no big plays. It was really, he was very good at protecting the ball, making great decisions, even if it didn't look pretty. He threw the ball away well. He ran with it when no one was open. He didn't force the ball, um, unlike the other guy across the field. But what they do have is probably one of the best play designer slash play callers in Kyle Shanahan. Uh, they've got an, a you know, enormous amount uh, by comparison to positionless offensive players. So McCaffrey can both play running back and receiver. So can Debo Samuel. They've got an elite, not only catching tight end like Kelsey 
in, in George Kittle, but a great blocking tight end. They've got, you know, a fullback that nobody has in use check and they're deep everywhere. And they got one of the best offensive lines themselves and the best offensive lineman in Trent Williams. So I think that's why Brock Purdy doesn't have to do anything special. He just has to play consistent, which is exactly what he just did. You know, I think if the Niners move on and even and especially if they win the Super Bowl, the key to this season is going to everybody's going to look back. And I think is the turning point for the NFL is the McCaffrey trade. You know, yeah. a couple of years ago, no one would have traded McCaffrey. I mean, he was that good. He was that. And then he got some injuries, and and you know, when you have a guy like that, you think, oh, can he can do? Can you continue to do it? Should I trade him and get something for him now? And he proved that he can continue to do it. And they didn't have to give up a ton for him. Uh, in re- in retrospect, when you look at it this way, especially if they go to the Super Bowl. And that, I think, was the benchmark of this particular NFL season. I agree with you. But look what they – this is a program they've put together for several years now. And here, again, Christian McCaffrey just ended this game with a potential calf strain. And so will he be at 100% by – where they play Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. So by Sunday, will he be where he needs to be to be as effective? I believe he will. And – you're right, though. I think when they when they went after and got him, along with when Brock Purdy stepped in and right. has been perfect ever since. Um, you know, I just to me, this team is not only going to get to the Super Bowl, they'll win it. I Bengals think they're that Chiefs. good. Now, the, the Bengals and Chiefs. Now, this is another mystery. You hate to pick against the Chiefs, but the Bengals are just as good, and both quarterbacks are on fire right now. The offenses and the defenses, no one. Uh, you know, could could upset, could be upset with a pick em attitude here. I mean, who in the heck do you pick in this game? These two teams right now, I think, are probably the two most evenly matched teams I've possibly ever seen going into an NFL uh, championship game. All right. Well, I'll, I'll pick one here. So I'm going to pick the Bengals again, like they did last year, because they're deeper now than they were last year despite the fact that they had three injured offensive linemen not playing in this past game, dominated. And uh, and so they're deep. Uh, their quarterback's not hurt. And I, I got to believe that Patrick Mahomes, as great as he is, um, and whether that storm physically in that game, I think he's going to now be stiffer this coming weekend than he was during the game. Um, and so that's why... Uh, oh, and I almost forgot the Bengals' defense and their coordinator, Lou Anamrumo. Is that how you pronounce his name? This guy is special, too. Now, if I'm him, I might consider doubling Kelsey the whole game and just make anybody else on the field beat you than that guy. And there you have it, another edition of Kramer and Brill. Find out more by going to our website, KramerandBrill.com, or on my Bob Brill YouTube channel. For my friend and colleague, Eric Kramer, I'm Bob Brill, and we'll see you next time.